Hi, my name is Lise Colucci, and I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being. On this program, I talk to narcissistic abuse survivors about topics and their experiences with narcissistic abuse, and I try to answer any questions that they might have. Today, I continue my conversation with Ronnie, where we talk about trauma bonds, sex, and the female narcissist. Hit subscribe and let's go. We're back with Ronnie today. Hi, Ronnie. Hello, Liz. Hello. Um, so we were we were talking before about being with the narcissistic woman mm -hmm. for thirteen years and not knowing in the beginning what she was doing, and then realizing later what it was and how it also led to deeper trauma bonds after separations. Uh, every time we'd get together. Um, We'd have sex. We worked together as a couple. And then the next day, I'd be emotionally attached to her again, thinking we're fixing our relationship. And then she would tell me, oh, we shouldn't be doing that. Um, it's against God or, you know, we shouldn't be doing that. We're separated. And then that would totally deflate me. And then I'd get trauma bonded even deeper if I'm what I'm making. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Yeah, but you I, are. Can Let me backtrack just a second. Were you, um, when this happened... You were separated for a time, and then right. what would instigate the contact and the sexual contact? Okay, so since since there were six six occasions, she did this to me in thirteen years. After she'd separate, she'd move out, get her own place, get her own life, whatever. Um, she'd come back for a something at the house, or hey, can you come over? I need help fixing my TV, or hey, can you come over? I need help moving a piece of furniture. So I would go over there, always trying to help her and please her. And I'd be all happy, butterflies, the adrenaline, all the chemicals, oh, we're going to fix it, going to fix it. We'd go over there, and then she would always instigate it to, oh, will you rub my back? Or, hey, will you rub this? Or would you rub that? And that would lead to sex. Okay. And then after sex would come, she'd be very short with me, tell me I need to go ahead and leave, and I, I'd leave. And then the next day, I would typically get a text or a phone call, primarily a text saying something to the effect that what happened last night didn't mean anything. We can't do that anymore. It makes things confusing. Um, it's not right if we're going to be divorced and separated that so we continue to have sex um, to go ahead and just stay away from her. And, and so would, when that happened, what, what did that um, feel like emotionally for you? Oh, I was a bro uh, broken hearted. I was broken hearted because the night before I'm watching movies, I'm sitting there thinking in my mind, okay, this poor thing who's abused, she's getting to her, she's getting to her senses. I'm in her life again. I'll take this, even though we're not together, I'll still come over here and babysit or wash clothes or move furniture or whatever. And then as soon as I would get that feeling of, wow, this is going to be great again. When she would tell me that I would be totally like a normal thing. It kept getting worse as time passed, you know, as, as it would go on. I never caught it as trauma bonding, mm -hmm. but it was very much, uh, it's looking back at our separation. Anytime I would try to move on, she would try to come in the picture in some sexual way. To the okay. Point my apartment, anything. And she'd use that against me to control me. I didn't know it though. Right. In the days that followed, what, what would go, be going through your head? Uh, I would go into a panic phase. I'd probably start texting her a lot. You know, whatever you need, I'm here for you. I love you. I apologize for this. I apologize for that. There's times I would go buy her gift certificates for massages, new purses, jewelry, small trips. So basically, it, it, it amplified her getting supply. It, it, created, yeah, yeah, it yeah. created a supply factory out of you. Oh, yeah. 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 Debtors. Okay. I mean, looking back, it became a systematic thing. Right. Sunday through Thursday, me, discard me on for this is I'm talking about during the separations, not the five major discards. Okay. But I realized I was being discarded within the discards because once she got out on her own and repainted her house and got her new house, her new car and changed her hairstyle, changed her eye color, had this whole fake thing going. I'd try to give them a life. She'd bring me in. And then all of a sudden I'd be there for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, she discarded me again within the discard mm -hmm. and then hooped me back in on Sundays because she needed me to run kids to school, pick up kids from school, and so forth. Didn't know it when I was doing it. 
But looking back, that was the pattern. Right. Sunday, Monday. Now on Thursday or Friday, her ex-husband would come to town to see the kids and they would go off on the weekend to see circuses or have family dinners or go to the park. So I'd be the one like mostly wrapped with her. Mm-hmm. Although I didn't mean anything to her because I should have seen the writing on the wall. Who would do that to somebody they love? Right. But she let it all through the whole. She dragged me back in, looking back through the hoovering. Sex would get me sickly addicted to that, emotionally addicted. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, oh, I don't want you to do this. I don't want to see you anymore. I sit back and go, why not, baby? I love you. Here's trinkets. Here's rings. Here's coupons. Here's mm-hmm. gift certificates. Please, 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 please. Little did I know I was supplying her and telling her, hey, keep doing this to me and I'll keep buying you Dooney and Burke purses. Okay. I yeah. didn't know. So it was, but it was always controlled by the sex. And then, but everything about her looking for a relationship was either she was sexually abused. All I wanted to do was use her like a piece of meat. Mm-hmm. And then if I withdrew from that, oh, what's the matter? I'm not attractive to you, to you anymore. So either way I went in the bedroom, it was never right. So if she told me I was sexually abused as a child and I want to be held, but all you want to do is use these meat. So if I'd go to bed and try to hold her, oh, what's the matter? You don't want any? I don't look good to you anymore. So right. emotionally, my mind was back and forth to when it became part of doing the act. It was always about her and then get off of me. Right. And that blew my mind. But I would do it because I thought I was hurting her because she's a sexual abuse victim. Okay. So she played me heavy that way. Heavy. So she and just, was, in, in a, the entire relationship, she would um, use sex for power. Yes. The whole time. And then you got to understand, she never gave me any compliments. So mm-hmm. I thought in my mind, the fact she's having sex with me meant she loved me because she would always preach about sex being the most intimate thing you can do with somebody mm-hmm. and all, all the things it means and soul ties. So and she groomed you to believe something. That, exactly. Right. But she really didn't believe this. She was using that right. to right to plant ideas in your head. Okay. Yeah. And right. so when you say um when you were talking about the trauma bonds, you had some you had something to say about that that was uh, you felt like as a man might be a little bit different than the way you hear oh, it described yeah. as a woman. Yeah, I think with trauma that. bonds you know, once you realize what they are, mm. um, most men's aspect on things is, hey, I'm a man, that's a woman, get over it. Um, you know, she's just using you or you're better than that. But the emotional a- attack and what it does to a man, mm. it's a totally crazy. Like you sit back and if you don't put the tools in place to make those inventories of what they've done to you to go back to every time they want to hoover you back in, the trauma bonds are amazing. I, you forget about all that. You forget about all that, that hatred they did to you or de- devaluing you and cutting you down and abusing you. And they just show you the right look and you're immediately all these chemicals rush. And it's like putting that shot in your arm and your heart rate goes up and you just want them back so bad, but you don't really want them back. And that's where I couldn't understand it. And I, I didn't know where to go to get help for that. I didn't even know it existed. Right. Because most men aren't going to say, hey, buddy. I'm addicted to my wife because I'm getting a shot of dopamine or a shot of cortisol or a shot of this or a shot of that. Cause guys don't talk about that. Hey, let's go get a beer and get the typical guy lecture. Dude, I dump her, go find you a new girl, get over it, whatever it may be. And they don't right. understand that you're stuck in this sick feelings of being numb. One thing that I realized how sick I was getting with the whole uh-huh. sexual thing, uh-huh. especially during the separations when I kind of started to see, I didn't know what it was, but I did see the pattern of sex discard. Didn't yeah. know it was called that back then. That when we would be intimate, I almost was get teary eyed when it was coming to an end because I knew what the next day brought. Does it make any sense? Yes, I was going to ask that. I was wondering if you had anticipation. Like yeah, you yeah. started to yeah. notice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I started in the very beginning. I didn't. I, I just show up the next day thinking, hey, we're working on things. It's great. And be discarded again. And honey, baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But these last few times when that would come into play, I would be so emotionally attached to her or trauma bonded to her mm-hmm. that towards the end of the act, okay, it's almost like you, I didn't want it to end, mm-hmm. not because of the sexual act itself, 
but I knew what was coming the next day like clockwork. I right. That's that it's gonna change, but it never did. So I'd have to go through the next day of waking up. I can't go see her now. I'm no good now. Leave me alone now. Right, All and that's really important because that shows where it crosses over from just the attachment sex itself can have to begin with. Right. You know, right. Into where it meets trauma bonding at the same time because you're you have basically a cognitive dissonance happening and oh. you yeah and you have um um awareness starting to awaken at the same yeah. time as this this is experience is happening and you're and you're trapped in the trauma bond at the same time you can't just I, step I, out I used of to it. cry so much and that would just crush me and i couldn't understand what was going on here and i will put this out there for men that are going through this do not, do not, I don't care how they come and hoover you in, try to get out of that sexual stuff quickly. When you're in a trauma bond and don't realize it, or you realize you're in a trauma bond, it will grab you and it will hold you in there and they will use that. She'll come over and knock boots with you on Monday to mess up your whole week so you're stuck under her control while she's living the dream doing her thing. And she'll come back on Monday and do it again and come back. That's all they do. They, 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 they come in there. They know you're going to be emotional about it. They're going to mess your whole week up. They'll sleep with you, mess you up, and then they'll go on with their life. So all you become them is a true supply. Mm -hmm. And they don't even want the sex half the time. They just want to control you. Right. I thought I could be a dude and control it. Oh, not get emotionally connected. Oh, it's just a piece of this or it's just the one that – no, 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 no. Especially no. – no, no, it doesn't work that way. It trauma bonds you to where you're so broken – because you think it's going to be so good, it's going to change this time. It's the most intimate thing people can do. Why is she sleeping with you? If she doesn't love you, oh, she loves me again? No, 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 no. Do no. you feel like? Um, do you feel like this this time um, that uh, to break the trauma bonds as you are doing um, that, that it was a critical factor to oh. not? Yeah. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's look back in the beginning of our separation before the divorce. I knew what she was going to do and I thought I could handle it. And I went ahead and slept with her. Mm -hmm. In other words, I, I, we were separated. I was prepared. I was told myself, don't get emotional. It is what it is. It's a booty call. No, I, you can't stop that. Right. So had I not stopped this and I'm sure to be presented to me again here in the future. And it has been presented to me again. I've turned it down. That is like, um, I guess trying to say I am off heroin, but I'm going to do pills. Right. Oh, hey, I'm not going to do pills. I'm going to do heroin. And so, it's still going to kill you. <laughs> right. And so what do you think was a helping factor in having you stop? What stopped you? Or what, um, what helped you to not go there? Getting around, talking with you, span you, and just researching, researching, researching. Just okay. researching what was available and finding that most of the stuff that was available, again, was... I felt primarily for the abusive narc male. I didn't see very much out there for the male that can't figure out why he's crying because he's had sex with his wife right. or his girlfriend. Right. There's nothing that says, oh, by the way, guy, hey, six foot dude that can lift weights and all that stuff, you're going to be crushed if you go and touch that apple over there. Right. You're a guy. I can handle it. No, you can't. Right. You can't. That trauma bond is so real. But getting involved. Right, it's not the same thing as a as a casual sex or a one night. No, stand. no, no, no. No, you are so emotionally bonded to them. I'm telling you, I prepped the, during our separation. We had sex. I prepped my head for it. I knew it was coming. I, I game prepped. I'm like, ah, I got this. I got this. The next day, she went on about herself, and I can quote it. You know that can't happen anymore. We're separated. That's not healthy. It makes things all mushy. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God. I had to leave, even though I prepped and knew it was coming. This right. 13 years of this. I was crushed out of the game for a week. Slow right. songs, journaling, crying, can't figure it out. What's wrong with me? How come I'm such a monster? So it doesn't only play on that aspect of you. As a male, you feel rejected in that department, so it plays on your ego, too, because right. whatever, you don't have one, really, because you're crushed. But now you start thinking, oh, am I not good enough for her in that department? Is this why she discarded me because I'm not good? 
Um, is it because of this? Because you got to remember too, we share so much with them, even as males, our person, personal dark secrets. She knew what she was doing every time. Right. And I think they do it effectively. They do it more effectively that because most, many men will very easily or with not a whole lot of persuasion <laughs> go, go there. And, and a lot of women have, uh, takes a lot more persuasion to get them to, you know, I mean, that's pretty typical, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's, um, and they know it. They know they're playing with it. They know they can control with it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, yeah. Right. A lot of times with a man, men are meant to believe we're leaders. Um, then you bring the spiritual realm in it. If you're a Christian, then you're supposed to be the leader above your wife and above your family. So you have all these preconceived things as a man. And when you don't see, it doesn't have to be involved with the narc. You could be a failure because you feel like you're not paying the bills or you're not working hard enough. But then when you're involved with the narc and it gets amplified, we shut down. Men mm-hmm. shut down. We ball it up. You don't go to a bar and see guys hanging out going, oh, my God, I didn't make enough money this week. They're all talking about how fast their boats they don't have are, how big the fish they didn't catch is. They're, we're milked that way. We're competitive even when we're suffering. So to be sure there's an avenue out there for a man, because I can guarantee you there's men out there that are going, you know what I mean? If right. I I can, I'll say that like, every survivor feels weak at that point. It's not that is that's male and female. And I know it feels different as a guy. I'm sure right. to, to have right. that experience and to accept that that's a reality that, you know, but it's sort of like everybody who gets the flu and has a high fever it feels like crap and they're, and they're weak. Right. It's right. just, it's, you know, it doesn't make you less of a man to be vulnerable or to have a need for a uh, help. It's, right. um, and, and it is sometimes just having somebody listen and then reflect back to you what they hear and what you're saying that uh-huh. they you can, tell you're not crazy. Right. You know, right. Crazy. <laughs> right. You know? Everything right. I said, do I, am I, is it me or is it, you know, like the first night with you, Lisa, when I spoke with you was all these things. And as a guy, I wanted to be sure, Hey, do I bail on her because she's got these issues or is she a victim and I need to stick by her side even more? Well, and that's a good point too. I think uh, I've heard that more than once from men is that, they have been taught, society has taught them, their, their upbringing has taught them to stick it out and, mm-hmm. you know, not give up on people and help to fix people or support people through their harder times or the, the challenges they have in their life. And those are all great. Again, those are great strengths in, and that, that has an integrity to it. However, we then have to separate and see a narcissist is a narcissist. There right. is no, there's no changing, there's no fixing, and it doesn't matter that they have had a hard life. And these things don't matter anymore because the personality disorder that they have does not allow them to change, and it doesn't right. allow them to have empathy. So without that, it's sort of like there's nothing to fix. There's nothing to, there's, there's, no, there's no safety in it for you. When you have the anxiety and the butterflies and the, and the, all the stuff that goes on in your head during a discard and you hook back up sexually with the narcissist, that pattern that's created in you of, uh-huh. I feel anxious. Oh, 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 she wants me. Oh, she wants to have sex. Okay. You know, we're back together or we're working things out. That cycle that's created when you, when you completely end things with a narcissist and you don't go back, that pattern is still, you know, part of our, um, it's still the quickest path in our, in our brains, right? That I feel because the anxiety comes up, right? The, it, as you're healing and as you go, you know, you'll have good days and then you have days where you're filled with anxiety and the butterflies come or, or maybe you get a Hoover attempt and you get that same feeling again is the tendency to want to seek it in somebody else that might be safer there. Um, I don't think so. I think by talking to you and by being more aware of it, uh-huh. I think now I've just kind of numb myself to the idea. I'm expecting the Hoover. Like but when, it, when, you, when you had the relationship quickly after a discard last time, do you think it had something to do with that? Oh, of course. Of to course. calm the anxiety like, like it was part yeah, of the same cycle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, had no, I had no proper tools to soothe myself. Right. I was always right. giving. Um, I had the addiction of, of, of buying and shopping and cleaning and washing and transporting kids. And when I was taken from me from the discard, 
had all this time. So I might get in my head and it was horrible. It was drinking whiskey every night. It was writing these long letters I never mailed. It was writing, watching Garth Brooks videos over and over. It was sick. So then I'd find something to put my time into, which would be the first bright ob shiny object that came by. I said, hey, you're cute. Oh, whoa, you actually gave me a compliment? Oh, wow, you're nice. Didn't get past that. That's all I needed because I wasn't getting that. And then right. I think, oh, this is the one, you know, right. and then she moved me back in. And the cycle was never healthy for, for anybody involved in my cycle. Right, my ex, right, right. For the girl I was bringing into it, I hurt one really, really bad. Um, you know, gosh, after I went back with my ex, I crushed this girl. And so it's not only dangerous to you and your narc, it's also you got to think of other people's feelings because mm -hmm. everybody out there is not emotionally messes. They're looking for these roller coaster rides. There are good people out there. Right. Just if you're not good enough to be for them, don't hurt them. And I did that horribly to this girl. And I reached out to her and I apologized via text. We became somewhat of friends. The problem I have, because I wasn't healthy, I didn't know how to handle a good, good girl. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't ready for that. So what do I do? Here comes the ex over me in. I want counseling. It's my fault. I'll change. All I ever wanted was to hear those words. I jump back into that. Next thing you know, here comes the sex. Next thing you know, let's go house shopping. Next thing you know, discard. We all know what happens after that. They don't change. Right. So that's one goal I have now is I don't want to hurt anybody else. So I try to put that as a priority versus Ronnie's needs to be lonely. Right. Because I don't want to be that. I right. And and your own, um, do you are you able to now look at what it was the narcissist was sort of meeting and not meeting for you so that you can heal those places? You know, that's a tough one because going from an abusive childhood into the military, into a narcissistic relationship, you kind of know where those healthy places are. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like looking forward to, I test things now and find out if it makes me happy or not. I can honestly say right now that all I thought she meant for me, she meant nothing for me. Right. And I, it sounds very hard to say it that way. But all I thought she was in the very beginning of our relationship, I can't look back and see that at, at all. Mm -hmm. I just see take, take, crush, destroy, financially, verbally, you name it. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you that there's nothing that she meant for me. Nothing. Because not even the sex portion of it was the way I feel it should be with the husband and wife. So learning that. You know what I mean? Learning right, that. Right. Learning it and uh, right, setting new goals and setting some goals for healing around Yes. Around yes. finding out who you are in that avenue, in that respect. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I just joined the kickball league. I'm 47. I'm playing kickball in a league. And fun. loving it. That's fun. And it's not all about trying to hook up with women. No. You know, guys. No, it's about home. discovering who you are outside yeah. of a relationship. That's it. And, and a then, lot of guys out there don't know how to do that. A lot of people don't know how to do that. Do you have any questions around any of the topics that we've talked about that would help you to understand more about yourself or about the situation? Uh, I, I think to reiterate what we talked about today is the guys that are out there thinking they're going to fix their girls with sex, the emotional guys that are out there that are always wanting that dream and they want to fight for that marriage and stuff, it doesn't work like that. You are going to just keep me torn down. And as you get torn down more and more as you get older, it takes longer to build back up, longer right. to believe in yourself. You think, oh, I got it. It's old hat. I can do it. No. Did it for 13 years. And four months ago, I fell for it again. And the next day, I'm crying, listening to, you know, who knows what the song of the day was then. Crushed. So right. you got to protect your peace by saying you no. Know. And they are good. They, they, if there's a favorite dress you like and they got that on and you're separated from them, you know what they're trying to do. Or they'll come by you and they'll brush against you. Or, hey, I've got, a, I've got a sore back from working out. They ain't never worked out, okay? Oh, yeah, they are superstars. And you or me, okay, next thing you know, it's nothing. It's, it's a tool to do. Right, right. You're right oh, back yeah. under their control, right? Yeah. Eat you up. Well, and a narcissist will use, will use sex every time. It's never just, uh, it's never just the act itself. No, yep. No. And that's always, they, know you. they know you because you've told them all your deepest, darkest secrets. Right. You know? Right. And so it's one of those things where if you do it over and over, expect, expect things to be different. You may be a little bit crazy. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you for watching. And again, my name is Lise Colucci. For information about me, about coaching, group coaching, or to be a guest survivor on this program, see the links below. Leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.